Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for being here to learn more about Career Eco and prepare for the upcoming virtual career fair at Carnegie Mellon from September 14th to 16th. This year, we're super excited to be partnering with CMU's Career and Professional Development Center, or CPDC, and our Silicon Valley campus to bring together our three fairs, the Technical Opportunities Conference, or TOC, Encompass, and Converge Silicon Valley into one great event. My name is Megan Ankita, and I am a sophomore studying electrical and computer engineering. My name is Tanvi Barga, and I'm a junior also studying electrical and computer engineering. Uh, we are the TOC co-directors and have been working with Kelly McCoy, a staff member in the College of Engineering, to lead a student planning group made up of the Corporate Relations Committee and the Campus Relations Committee. Our team has been working hard to plan the career fair and make it worthwhile for all of you. And the students are really excited to meet all of you very soon. As a general note for employers, um, please let any CMU alumni recruiters participating for your companies to know to stop by the alumni relations booth in Career Eco during the fair. If anyone has any questions throughout this demonstration, please put them in the Q&A section and we will try to answer as many of them as we can during the presentation and then the rest at the end. We'll also be recording this session in case you wanna send it to anyone who missed this. And hopefully within the next day or two, the session will be available on the CMU CPDC employer page or cmu.edu slash career. And also email out the, the link as well. Now to kick off the demo, we have Emma Burgett and Christina Van Dewater from Career Eco. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're excited to go over some of the platform with you so that you guys become more familiar with the site um, and hopefully we get you more comfortable so that you're ready uh, for your event. Um, so Christina is going to go ahead and she's going to start sharing the screen and you'll notice that it's not obviously Carnegie Mellon showing up. We're going to go ahead and run through one of our sample fairs. Um, so that's what you're looking at today. This is an employer viewpoint. So we're going to go through each of the sections that you see up at the top, the event dashboard, candidates, reports, admin, and messages. And then we're also going to go into a chat room later on so that you all can see how that operates to really get a feel uh, for what it will be like on event day. I think that we'll be taking questions um, throughout if you want to put them in the chat. Uh, but for now, we'll go ahead and get started and we'll make sure to take questions along the way. So right now, Christina is logged in as uh, an employer, Bob Smith. And once you register or sorry, log into your account, it will open to this event dashboard. Um, and for you all, you'll see the Carnegie Mellon fairs, um, either all three of them, one of them, two of them, whichever you chose to register, register for. Um, for purposes of this, we're gonna go in and then we're gonna click on manage events so that I can show you some profile edits that you can make. So the first, once you click on manage event, it will open you to this main page where you'll see you have these tabs, details, chat room and event reminders. This details tab will have all of the information that you filled out during your registration process when you first registered for these events. Um, so if you want to update along the way, if anything changes, you can go ahead and do so here. So maybe you didn't select Colorado and now you'd like to, you can go ahead and click and it will save. From here, you also have the option to upload chat rooms. Um, so you'd click on this tab and then you'd create a chat room. Again, since this is a sample event, some more chat rooms are being set up, but you guys uh, will have the option to just create one chat room and then um, a private chat room for only you and your organization to have access to. So from here, you'd go ahead and you'd put in a topic and we're doing ask questions about the virtual platform. Then you'll want to create a welcome message and this can be as long or short and sweet as you'd like. If you have hyperlinks that you'd like to add in here, you can do so. This information will appear once the candidate enters into your chat room and we'll show you when we go into a chat, but this will all be visible to the candidates um, and you all when you enter the chat room. 
So we filled out the welcome message and now we want to add our chat times. When you click add chat time, it will automatically set to the date and the time of the event. If you'd like to change those times, you do so by just clicking on the clock icon and you can adjust the times of the event. If you want to add multiple times because you want to set breaks for your organization, you can absolutely do so. So Christina's setting it so that they're in the event from 12 to 2.30, and then maybe that you wanna take a 30 minute break and then come back and you can do so and the candidates will have a viewpoint of that schedule. We can go into this further and as you guys have questions, but you won't want to set the schedule to particular, um, individual specific people. So if you're having uh, two people man your chat room from 12 to 2, you don't need to set schedules for them. You'll just input the entirety time, the entire time that you'd like to be an event and then communicate internally how you'd like to staff the chat room. Um, and then if we wanted to make a private chat room, all you have to do is click on this button here saying private chat and it will allow you to set up a private chat room that again only you and your organization will have access to um, and candidates won't have access to. So this is different than the private chatting that you can do with candidates. This is just for you and your organization to talk amongst yourself um, throughout the fair. Okay. So once you have your chat room set up, you can go to edit organization profile there under your name. And this is where you can go to obviously update your organization profile, which is really helpful for candidates when they're learning about your organization. We encourage you all to put as much information as possible so that uh, the candidates can do their proper resource and figure out you know, more about your organization and what you have to offer. So here you'll go to edit default profile and then just hit okay. And first you'll see that there's the option to upload a logo. If you hover over the blue circle question mark, this will tell you the pixelation sizes that you need um, to add into this section. If they're not the exact pi pixel dimensions, that's okay. It will still upload. It just won't uh, fill the, the space provided. And the same is true for the custom image, the banner below. You can, again, hover over that question mark and it will tell you the dimensions needed for this section. You also have the option to put information about your organization, a little about section, which you can lo locate to the left of the panel. If you wanna edit, you'll just click on the, the pencil to the bottom right corner, and this is where you'll input all of this information. To add an image, you simply just click insert image, which Christina is hovering over now, and be sure to include uh, the link address where it is highlighted in blue. You can add an alternate text or um, add different widths and heights for the image. And then you would just hit insert, which we don't need to do. <laughs> Below it, you'll see that we've included a little sample excerpt about our company, which you all can do as well. And again, this can be as long or as short, as simple as you'd like. But again, the more information that you all provide as an organization, the better and more beneficial to the candidates. Anna, we have a few questions. Sure. About the chat room. So yep. only one public chat room. So yes, you will only get one main chat room um, that candidates can enter into. But if you have, uh, let's say you have eight recruiters in your chat room, each of the eight recruiters can have private chats with candidates. Um, so we don't limit you on the number of private chats you have. We just, num we just limit the number of main chat rooms that you can have. And again, when we get into the chat room, you can kind of see how this, the chat room splits up into the main and private chat. Were there any other questions about the chat room or profile while we're here? 
So there was one more. Um, are there going to be time slots for students to sign up or is it just a chat room? Good question. Um, so candidates will not sign up for your chat rooms. They'll just come in and go as they choose. So candidates have access to all of your schedules that you input for your chat times. And from there, they can decide when they'd like to enter into your chat room. And then another one, how many students are allowed into the chat room? There can be be a hundred participants at one time. Uh, if they try to, if the limit is exceeded, candidates will be notified that they can't enter the chat room because it's, it's reached its capacity. So then they'll just have to come back and try later. There's no automated message that lets them know um, that the chat room is, you know, under the maximum limit. So they would just have to come back. Um, and someone has asked, could you please go back to how to edit the chat room? Because yes, not absolutely. So we'll go back to the event dashboard and we'll click on manage event. And you'll see that there's a chat rooms tab, which you'll click on. And you can, so if we were doing about our organization was our chat room. And again, apologies, this is just a sample fair. So we have multiple set up, but you would just have one um, and you would go ahead and click edit. And then from there, you can change any of the information that you've included, if it be the topic, the welcome message or your chat times. Um, again, to adjust the chat times, just click on the little clock icon and select the times that you'd like to have for the event. And if you want um, to set a break for your organization, you'll just click add chat time there in blue and add another chat time. Um, and just so you all know, you won't be able to set multiple chat times consecutively. So you couldn't do 3.30 to 6 and then the next line be 6 to 10 and then 10 to 12. The system won't let you set it up like that. You'd have to create some sort of break in between. Awesome. There's a few more questions in the Q&A and we'll get to them in the end. You can continue with your demo. Emma. Okay, great. Christina, so we can go ahead and head back to the profile section. Sure. And I'll pause after that so we can see if there's any that we'd like to go over that. Okay. Um, the next, so after we've gone ahead and updated this, we can go ahead um, and you all did have a work authorization question. So um, if that is something that you need to update within your profile, you can do so again by clicking on this pencil and it will let you change um, the answer that you originally selected in registration. The next important part of the profile is probably the contact information. Um, and as you can see, when Christina clicks on each of the tabs on the left, um, that's when the pencil comes up. So if you guys are like, the pencil isn't showing up, it's because you need to click on each of the tabs and then it will appear for you to edit. So show click on the pencil. And this is where you can upload multiple URLs. So you uploaded your website uh, when you first registered for the fair, but now you have the option to upload more URLs. So it can be your career website and then any social media websites that you have. And this is all viewable to candidates, um, both in the chat room um, and when they're looking at the list of organizations participating within their event dashboard. There's also the option for you all to provide a point of contact, um, both name and contact, you know, email. Um, if you all would like, again, this will be publicly displayed on your profile for uh, anyone to see. So just keep that in mind, but there is the option for you to do so. And you just put that uh, down there at the bottom. Okay. So far, do we have any questions on the profile? Okay. And then Christina, can you go back to the profile list so I can show how to do a new sure. profile? Okay. 
So we just showed you how to set up your default profile, but you can also set profiles that are event specific. So if there are some things um, that you'd like to have different on your profile from event to event, you can do so. Um, you just click on new profile and that gives you the option to update event specific profiles. Um, so it starts with what you've included in your default, but if you want to change some things up, again, you just go through the same editing process of clicking on the pencil icon and making any changes. Emma, there are a few questions that we Great. can um, For the photo insert function, can you upload from a file or does it have to be from a website? For the logo and custom image, it will have to be from a file. So. Do you mean like within the profile? Because those have to be a web link where they're hosted, like these images. Oh, correct. I think you meant this, yeah. Sorry. So if you did mean the for this, where Christina's at, it does have to be a web link. Um, but if you're talking about the logo or the banner, those have to be files. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I think that's the only question about profiles. Okay, perfect. All right, so then we will scroll back to the top and we can go through the candidate section of your event dashboard. So this is where you will get to view all candidates. And actually this page has recently been updated. So I'm glad we're doing this demo for you guys to, to see kind of the changes that were made um, and how to utilize them. So to see any candidates that have registered for the event, you now have to select an event. So we have this blue bar now and Christina will go ahead and select the sample virtual event. And from there, we'll be able to see all candidates that have registered for this event. If you want to show candidates um, from events past seven days, you'd need to click on this show all events, and then you have the option to select events that have surpassed seven days. On or within this section, you have the option to filter candidates based on how you want to view them. So based on the registration questions uh, you all were provided, this, these bars may be a little different. But from here, you have the option to do drop downs. So we can do work experience six to eight. We can do majors, um, would select there. Maybe we want to get rid of that because we don't have enough. <laughs> so you can exit out. Um, so you can select as many, um, you know, filter options at the top as you'd like, you know, she has zero to one and then she had six to eight and same for majors. You can have more than just selecting accounting um, as a major um, and then the candidates will appear below. If you want to only view candidates who have resumes, you could go ahead and exit from these fields and then you can click on this orange um, has resume and only candidates that have resumes will appear. From there, you can see that we have little icons next to their names and this is where you can go to view their profile as well as their resume. So Christina is going to go click on view candidate documents here for Alex. And we can see that this is the resume Alex has uploaded and we'd click this green down arrow to view it. Okay. If you want to like a candidate, that's, um, you would do this by just clicking on the star and it will highlight it to an orange star. Um, and then you have the option to see all of your light candidates towards the top. You can see that there's a tab up there and that way you can just look at your light candidates there. And you would like your candidates um, based off of what you've viewed, whether it be their profile and what they put in their registration answers or uh, what they've included on their resume. If we go back to the all candidates tab, Christina, if you click, on one of the candidates names. So for this case, we'll still do Alex. 
here's where we can see all of Alex's contact information, her education, um, the questions that she filled out during the registration process, and again, any documents that she's uploaded, whether it be her resume or portfolio, et cetera. Um, and after we review that and exit, this candidate will be reviewed. Um, so if you refresh, Christina. Thanks. You'll notice that Alex is no longer at the top. And once you review a candidate, they go to the end of the list um, and then their name becomes grayed out. So now Alex is here. If you want to only look at candidates that you've reviewed, you can again filter by this. So if you scroll up and click candidates reviewed, all of the candidates that you've looked at their profiles will appear here. If you want to look at candidates that you haven't reviewed, you'd obviously click candidates not reviewed. And this is a way to, you know, help you break out the number of candidates you've reviewed and help you to keep track. Okay. Again, if we go back to all candidates, so now we're going to look at all candidates that have been reviewed and not reviewed, um, we can see we can um, filter to candidates that have expressed interest, which you'll see is that little uh, blue checkbox with a check mark in it. So these are all candidates that have gone ahead and have viewed your organization's profile. Um, they've gone through everything and they, as well as your job postings, and they think that they will be a good fit for your organization. So here they'll go ahead and express interest in you all and it's by this blue box, as I mentioned. Um, and when we get into the messages tab, this is kind of important because if a candidate expresses interest in you, they meet your qualifications that you're looking for, you'll have the option to send only candidates that maybe have expressed interest in you um, a message to come on by, you know, your chat room at a specific time if you'd like to have a one-on-one -on -one chat with them. Hey, Emma, so we have one question about uh, can candidates see their liked status or is that private to company reps? That's for you all to see, not for the candidate, correct. Thank you. And then when students enter a private chat, are we able to see their resume? Yes, when, um, when candidates access your chat room, you'll be able to see their profile, which includes their resume as well. And then can all registered candidates' resumes be downloaded all together? So you have the, that's a good question. Um, you have the option to download um, resume books and you can download up to a hundred at one time. So you do so by clicking on the candidates report that will be below your name and then click on resume book by selected candidate. So whatever you select in this filtered area over here is what you'll be able to download in this resume book. There's also the option to download a candidate report um, by the filters as well. And you do that through the Excel, um, the Excel sheet here. And then um, for the candidates reviewed, will it show them as reviewed for everyone from your company or will it be for each individual recruiter? Um, this will be for your, um, your individual and then it would, it, so that you were keeping track of it. If that makes sense. Awesome. I think that's all for now. Thank you. you okay. All right. So now that we've gone through the candidate section, we can go ahead and go to the admin section, Christina. Um, so once one recruiter from your organization registers for the fair, they'll have this admin tab. And if any other recruiter joining your organization would like to be um, an admin for the event, you have the option to provide them with that access. So you can do that by, um, if Jim Smith, you can see that he's not an admin when you look down the column, we would click on edit. 
and then you'll go to user permissions and then we would click on account administrator and when you do that this gives them access to the admin section um, where they can go ahead and then up, uh, update your organization's profile and add you know well, I'll show you, add documents and stored messages. Um, but this is how you'd give them not only permission as an account administrator, but there's also other permissions. So they can have access to the candidates list if you'd like, messaging, reports, et cetera. This can all be managed through this user permissions. Um, and then we would go to save. And now this recruiter is in admin. So if we go back to the admin section, um, I'd also like to go through each of um, these upload documents and stored messages. So if you click upload documents here, these documents can be viewable um, to candidates when they enter the chat room. So I know that sometimes pamphlets are often handed out um, in these personal fairs, um, but now we're obviously doing it virtual. So you can upload all of those files here and when candidates access your chat room, they'll be able to click on these and view them. And when we go into a chat room, we'll also show you what that looks like. Uh, but here is where you would upload them. Just select files and then choose the files you'd like to add. We also have this stored messages feature that is in orange. And these are messages that you can create both for your organization um, as well as just yourself. Uh, this kind of helps to manage the flow of the chat room. So if you have a high volume of candidates, these are great to come back to so that you're not just typing away, but instead you can access these stored response and use them to send to candidates um, asking questions. Okay. Is there any questions on this admin section? Yes, so there was one. Um, can we individualize download files per event or will those be the same for all events that the company participates in? For the documents? Yeah. Uh, Christina, correct me if I'm wrong, but you have to upload documents for each event. Yeah, I think you would just um, upload like the appropriate documents that you wanted for that event and you're able to remove other documents if they're not relevant anymore. Correct. So you can just click the X here and remove that to make sure that you have your most current documents uploaded going into the event. I think that's all for now. Or yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, so then quickly we can go to the messages section of your event dashboard. Um, and this is what I was touching on earlier, but you all have the option to send messages to uh, specific candidates that have registered for the event. Um, so you don't have to do that in any external email. You can do it all within the your event dashboard. So here you'll click compose message and we'll kind of walk you through how you send out messages. So first select the fair um, of candidates that you want to send the message to. In our case, it's the sample. You'll type a subject just like you do for a regular email and then you create um, the body of the message also similar to a regular email. As you can see under subject, there's the option for allow replies. Um, this obviously means if you want candidates to reply to all or not, if you're sending it to all of the candidates, I don't know that you'll want to receive replies, but if you're sending it to a small group of candidates, i.e. maybe ones again that have expressed interest in you, you, you might wanna um, allow replies, okay? So once we have that set up, we'd go to next, and this is where we can select our users. You can select it by entering either the user's name or by filtering it through these options, whether it be their major, degree, school, et cetera. There's also the option to select candidate types, and this is where you'd see candidates that have expressed interest in you, um, your chat favorites, so maybe after the event you wanna send a note to candidates that you've chatted with, um, thanking them, and you could add them there, as well as your liked candidates. 
Then once you've selected the users that you'd like to send it to, you'll click add all users and then next. And here you'll just re review that everybody um, that you want to send to is here and you would click send. So if you notice too on the where we were in the first, there was a little message that said that uh, these messages would only um, be viewable by candidates between, a, not between, at 11 a.m. and 11 p.m. So they'll get notifications that they've received a message, but they won't be able to view the actual message um, until those two time periods, just so they're not inundated with emails throughout the day. Any questions on messaging? So do students receive messages via email or in the system only? This, well, the messages makes it so that you don't have to do it via email because that way you don't have to download a candidate report um, to pull emails. Um, and this way you can, you know, have, um, make it so that it's anonymous uh, for each of the candidates because you really don't want to share their information. So this is just a safer way to get messages out to candidates and easier. Mm -hmm. And they do get those notifications that are at 11 a.m. and 11 p.m. That is what goes into their email. Like Correct. they'll get the message at other times, but they'll receive the email notification just of all the message that, messages they received at those two times. All right. Thanks. That's good. Okay. Now. Okay. Uh, Christina, before we go into the chat room, I just want to point out the job postings for them. Sure. Um, so if you go again to event dashboard, you'll see here that there's job postings. And this is where you'll go to upload your job postings. Um, and you can see that some have expired. So if you upload job postings, they do expire after 60 days. Um, if you would like to renew them, you have the option to do so by just simply cl clicking renew and they will be expired. To add a new job posting, it's as simple as just clicking on this orange button here and then inputting all of your information. Um, when you click on the only visible for candidates that have registered for the fair, it will pop up for whatever um, fairs that you are registered for and then you can select um, from there. And then you would save. So you can have multiple job postings. You just need to make sure that you're including each of the information for those positions. Okay. Any questions before Christine and I head into a chat room to kind of show you what that looks like? I'm sure we'll get lots of questions in there, which is good. All right. We will go into Sure, so I just clicked back on my event dashboard here and then I'm just going to click chat now on my event dashboard to go in. And I'm just going to go in this connect with current employees room and click join chat. So you'll just see your one chat room on here and then if you created a private chat room, it would appear on here as well. Okay. So there you'll see Bob Smith, which is Christina in this case, is in the chat room. And then I, as a candidate, can now see that a moderator is online and I would go ahead and join that chat. Um, and I don't know that you can hear it from Christina's end, but she would have received a knocking noise that I've entered into the chat room. Um, and you guys can manage those noises. There's a little speaker button towards the top right that you can click on and this is how you'll manage your sounds um, sound settings for the event but you can see that you can mute all sounds um, so that one this always play sound would turn off but you can select your settings here okay so now that i'm a candidate i will go ahead and i will say hello bob and this will appear in the main chat room. So 
if there are multiple organization representatives, which you all get to have eight, they'd all be listed where Bob is. So you all would see one another and then, or the candidates would see all of the organization representatives. And then you would see all of the candidates that are participating again under Hope's name. They'd all be listed there. Now, if I want to go ahead and start a private chat, I, as the candidate, have the option to do so. And I'm just going to show that so you can see the notification that comes through when I do so. But Bob also has the option to initiate a private chat with me by clicking on the blue arrow there and then um, invite to private chat. And I'm going to do the same thing for him. I'm going to invite him to a private chat. Oh, and Apologies, Christy and I have chatted on this before, um, so it's it's not coming through, but it will say that Hope candidate has invited you to private chat. And now, so maybe I'll say hello. Actually, now it probably comes through. There it goes, mm -hmm. sorry. Okay, so this is the note that you receive when a candidate has private chatted with you. And you'd also notice to the left of the screen, there's a number one in a blue circle. And this is just letting you know the amount of messages that have been sent. Okay, so Christina can then respond back to me by clicking on my name. Perfect. And you'll notice that now I have a little P next to my name circled in orange. So this as recruiters lets you know that somebody from your team is already in a private chat with Hope Candidate so that you don't need to, you know, go ahead and start a private chat with me. Um, if Bob had initiated the private chat with me, there would be a different icon that would pop up. Um, and maybe we can go over the icons, Christina, but a a green um, green circle with a check mark in it would notify you all that somebody from your team has initiated a private chat with me. Okay. And then I, as the candidate available from private chat, can see that this is blue here and that Bob can private chat. And then so all of these icons are worth taking a look at. Like if Bob was also busy and I was in a private chat with him, but he wasn't getting back to me, he could mark himself as busy. That way I know um, why he isn't getting back to me quickly. You also see that there's online, idle, and offline. So if candidates haven't candidates or employers haven't responded in an amount of time, they'll go to idle and then move to offline when they mark themselves offline. Um, they would go to red. So these are just for you to take a view. Um, we can go back to private chat, um, but I just want to point out some features within the private chat. So you can do private video chats one-on-one -on -one with you and a candidate by selecting private video. This is the only time that candidates have the option to be on video. When you're in the main chat room, only you and other members from your team have access to broadcast different media options, but that is not true from candidates. When candidates are in the main chat room, they're only chatting. Um, you can maximize this view if you'd like. Right now, the screen is split in half, um, but if you want to maximize it, you can still toggle back and forth between the main chat room and your private chat by clicking towards the top like Christina is doing now. And then to minimize that view, just simply click on minimize where she's hovering over her um, hovering over and you'll see it goes back to a split screen. If you want to take a note on uh, Hope student during the private chat, you can go ahead and do so by taking note. And you can see that there's already in here, there's already one in here right now, um, but you can take as many notes as you'd like and then save it. Um, and as an admin of the event, you can have access to all of your recruiters notes. Um, but if you're not an admin, you'll just have access to the notes that you took. 
like I showed earlier, you have the option to upload stored messages. Um, so I just want to show you where those come into play and you can send them both in the private chat and in the main chat room. But you just click on the orange button as Christina did and then you can choose um, the ones that you'd like to send out. So you have your organization's chat responses, which are probably good for the main room. And then that way you don't have to type it all out. It's just automatically stored. And now Bob can say my store chat ones. And let's say he wants to do this for the private chat. He can go ahead and fill in the blanks that he's created and send this to me as well. So this is a really good way if you notice that, again, there's high volume within your chat room. This is super helpful for you to have prepared and ready to go so that you don't have to you know, type and respond to every question. Another way to kind of mediate the volume that could be in your chat room is through broadcast media, um, which is at the top. And when Christina clicks here, this is for your main chat room. Um, so there was the start private video for the private chat, but this is for everybody. There can be up to three broadcast medias used at one time. So if you and two other recruiters would like to be on video at one given time, you can absolutely do so. And you can field that questions that way uh, while also having other team members, you know, responding in chat as well. You also have the option to just do audio if you don't want to be on video um, and then you can screen share and do audio. Again, you have three broadcasting options. So if you want to do three broadcast audio, you can uh, one broadcast audio two video and audio. You can do so. If you're going through this and you are, are having any sort of issues, we've created this troubleshooting field, um, which Christina can click on now, which will kind of troubleshoot any issues that you may be having. Um, so we have a system configuration, browser configuration, and then hardware troubleshooting. And these um, are your first steps to help you kind of alleviate any issues you may have. If for some reason this troubleshooting option doesn't help you, there is the option um, for you to click on our need help button, which is in bright orange at the top. And if you click on that, it will give you contact information um, to both our phone lines and email where we'll have staff ready to help you with any questions you may have. Um, and then we also give you some tutorials um, and audio video help. So these are all resources that you have to help you on event day in the chat room. Okay. So we have a couple of questions. Sure. Um, we private chats can happen at the same time. Can we share screen and audio in the main chat room while remaining, while retaining private chats? So that we don't uh, limit you on the number of private chats that you can have. Um, so again, there could be eight recruiters each private chatting and maybe Bob has two private chats going on and somebody else has two other private chats going on. Um, you can broadcast while being in the main chat room and then being in private chat and maintaining that, although I don't know um, that you'd necessarily want to do that just just because um, if you're on video or you're on audio, it might be hard to manage both. But um, yes, something you can do. And then can you take notes at the same time as chatting with students. How do you or can you? Can you? Yes, you can. You just so you could be. Bob could be chatting with me right now and I just want to make a note um, about hope and he can do so and then save it and then go directly back to the chat. And those notes will save and then be viewable in reports um, after the event. Is there a practice candidate profile we can use to practice with our team? So there isn't, um, but you can go in as um, you know, multiple people from your team and practice in the chat room. And if you want to practice private chatting, you do have the option to private chat uh, among employers. So you would do the same thing um, 
as you would if you were initiating a private chat with a candidate, you would just initiate it with somebody from your team. So you still have the same feel, it's just there's not a, a fake candidate that you can practice with. And then there's a lot of questions about the video feature. Um, sure. Will recruiters share video in the larger chat room at the same time? Can you say that one more time? Sorry, you broke up a little. Can multiple recruiters share their video in the larger chat room at the same time? So you can, yeah, so you can do up to three broadcast medias at a time. So um, you just click here where Christina is broadcast media and then do share screen slash audio. Um, and you could do, you know, multiples of that. Does the video conferencing allow a virtual background for privacy? It does not. We, we um, don't have any fun backgrounds like Zoom. And then um, one of the attendees is asking if you can give a demo of how the video will look like in the platform. Um, Chris, so since we're on Zoom right Zoom. now, we wouldn't be able to pull it up. So we, we can't unfortunately through Zoom, um, but as soon as you click broadcast video slash audio, a smaller box will come up um, with obviously the image of you in it and you can adjust the sizing of that box as you would like. Um, but I'm sorry, we can't, we can't pull up video when we're on Zoom. It is in our tutorial though, um, what can, that looks like. And we can show you too where you can access uh, instructional videos and tutorials within your event dashboard. So mm -hmm. um, when you log into your account, you'll see that there's an instructions button at the top. And if you click there, this will provide you with access to multiple tutorials. And if you go down to the chat training, you have the option to select a four minute or 30 minute one. Um, obviously the 30 minute one is a little bit more extensive, but um, you can watch those or there's a tutorial PDF if you prefer not to watch videos, which just breaks it out for you. Awesome. And there you would be able to see what the video looks like. Thanks for pointing that out, Christina. Awesome. I think you guys can go ahead. Okay. okay. Uh, so we can go back to the chat room. I just want to point out um, how they can view the resume as well as files. Um, so when you all uploaded your files, as I showed you through the admin tab, you'll see that there's this files button here um, and candidates can click on that to see any of the files that you have uploaded. Um, so if you want to direct, you know, candidates um, to these files in your welcome message, if it's something that you want them to read ahead of time, then you can absolutely do so. Um, they would just click on the green arrow and then it would be downloaded. Okay. They can also view your profile from within the chat room, uh, which is here. And so when we went over you editing your profile, you didn't have some of these tabs that are located to the left. These tabs are included based off of the registra registration questions you filled out, job postings, and then chat times that you included. So this is really why it's important to include everything so that um, when candidates view your profile, they're getting the most amount of information. So then we'd exit out of this. And they also have access to your um, social media, which is up there as well, which you can see. But as somebody brought up earlier, um, how to see, you know, the, the candidate profile and resume, you just click on the small icon next to the green little chat uh, bubble and you can click view resume. And this is where you can go ahead and download the resume and view it if you'd like to within the chat room. Okay. Um, 
you also, which we can go more into in reporting, but you also have the option to download your transcript transcript report throughout the event um, and this will just download it into a PDF and it will break up your conversation both in the uh, main chat room as well as the private chat room so you have access to it here but as well as your report section which um, I can show you in a second and then your settings tab, if you click on that next to the chat transcript, you can update either your chat room times if you'd like to. So uh, let's say you need to cut it short for whatever reason, you can go ahead and change your chat room times here. You have the option to manage your stored responses in here, update your profile. Um, and then if you wanted to end your session and close out your room, you could do so here too and candidates wouldn't have access to this room anymore. Um, I think since we have eight minutes, if there are questions, um, we should probably start taking them and then I can briefly touch on reports because um, it's, it's pretty uh, explanatory. So I just want to make sure if there's chat questions, we get to them. And Emma, I do. This is Kelly. I just wanted to see if um, we do have a lot of questions that are still outstanding. Um, yeah. Are you available to stay on a little bit longer or would you prefer to answer any questions we don't get to in text form that we email out to everybody following this session? I, I'm happy to stay. I can stay on about 15 minutes uh, past one, if that's okay. Okay, let's plan on that. And um, for those of you on the call as attendees who are not able to stay on for the, the extra time, we will be sending out um, answers to questions in text and also the video following the session. And with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Christine and Emma. Perfect. Thank you. Do you want to finish the rest of your um, demonstration and then we can get to all the questions? Okay, sure. So uh, the only thing that I'm going to touch on really quickly is, uh, Christina, if we can just go to the reporting section. So the one thing that we didn't touch on when we first were going over thing is reports, but this is where you'll have access to candidate reports similar to what you saw um, in the candidate section of your event dashboard. But if you click on the candidate report, which is the top one, you'll be able to see all of the candidates contact information, name, registration questions, education, uh, their resume will also be downloaded on this Excel spreadsheet um, for you to view all at once. So all registered candidates will appear on this spreadsheet. You also have access to the chat transcript report, which we showed you, you can also pull um, from the chat room, but you can pull it from here as well and then the chat room participant report. So these will show all of the candidates that have entered into your chat room. Um, these other three reports or two reports um, for the under the fair report section are because this is a sample fair, so you don't need to um, worry about those. But really the candidate report, transcript report and participant report are useful for you all to one, see the candidates that actually registered and all of their information and then the participant report to see, you know, who actually came into your chat room. But again, um, nothing super crazy about these, just wanted to make you aware that they're here. And I think we're ready for all the questions. Awesome. Let's get started. We'll try to get to as many as possible. Um, so can you see the resume separately from the notes and chat window? So can you look at the resume, take notes and chat with the candidate on the same computer screen at once? Um, so you would have to you couldn't you'd have to view the resume and then if you had notes you would then have to take it um it's not like all three can't be up at once or two all right so can we upload video links to profile oh to there so um if yes 
if you go to the profile, you can put those into the URL link. So there's an option. Well, you ha if you want to put it in the about section, um, you can. The videos do have to be embedded. So it's not um, as simple as kind of the photo where you can just insert image. You'd have to embed it into the HTML text. Um, if you all need any help with embedding a video, that's where our events team would come in handy. So um, you can reach out to events at careereco.com and they'd be happy to help you with embedding a video into the HTML. Uh, but there is the option if you have like a YouTube URL, you can do that by including it in the contact section um, of your profile. So if we go back to that section and click on that, you'll see that there's a YouTube URL and you could include the link there, which candidates would have access to. Awesome. Um, typically students want to speak about the specific job posting they can view. How can we channel those students to the proper recruiter if there's only one chat room? Can sure. We yeah. That's a good question. Um, and I'm glad you asked because so if you go to edit profile, which is next to your name when you log in, you'll see that on this personal details page, there's a chat display name. So if you're recruiting for something specific, you should put your name as whatever you're recruiting for and then dash Bob Smith so that you can be identified. That way, when the candidate comes into the chat room, which Christina, maybe we can go back, um, when you go into the chat room, you'll see that now Bob Smith is um, the IT recruiter. And Christina can't do it from her end, but as a candidate, if I hover over uh, Bob Smith's name here, I can see his full name. Um, but that's, that's how you know who is recruiting for what with only having one chat room. Okay. And going back to what was mentioned earlier with the resume books, can employers go back in later to access those and how long can they have access to those? So you have, so you have access to candidate information indefinitely. Um, so as long as you keep your account, then you will have access to all the candidates for all of your fairs, whether or not they participated in the event. So you can download resumes um, before, during, and after event. Is there a way to see what the chat room will look like from the candidate side? Does it look similar to what's shown now? It looks exactly the same with, um, I think, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's pretty much the same, except they don't get to view um, when they look at, when they see other candidates join the, the chat room, they don't have the view of their full names for security purposes, um, but that's, that's really a larger difference minor difference, sorry. All right, and if companies have multiple Career Eco events live at one time, um, will they not be able to individualize in terms of documents that they can upload? Say that one more time. So if companies have multiple Career Eco events live at one time, um, and we were talking about how you can upload documents um, for each Career Eco event, um, would they still be able to individualize per event? So if you were in two events that were going on at the same time? Yeah. Basically. So then you would have to upload documents specific to those events, and then you would have to update your profile specific to those events if you wanted to. Um, but you'd have to upload different. If your documents are differing, you just have to for each of the events, you'd have to upload them that way, if that makes sense. And if I'm answering it correctly, if that's what you're asking. Yeah. Um, is there a way to see the history of when people join the chat room so we as recruiters can prioritize candidates for private chats? So you're asking when they come in? Yes. Yeah, so when candidates come in, they'll come to the top of the chat participants. So um, Hope's in there, but let's say I come in next, so I will then be at the top of the list. And would it make sense to create a separate chat room per representative to reach more students in case one room hits capacity? Or 
in your opinion, would multiple chat rooms be too difficult to manage? So you can't have multiple chat rooms. You can only have one main chat room. Um, and that's where kind of having specific names for your representatives comes into play um, so that candidates know uh, who to speak with. Um, they, that's how you differentiate because you can't have multiple chat rooms. Um, but what you can, the only other chat room that you can create is a private chat for your organization, um, which if we open another chat room, it would show towards the top, top of the sample organization. Um, also, there's a lot of questions about the video chat feature and mm -hmm. reiterate um, when employers and when students can have their video chat on. And then also if there's a timer for any of these. So there's not a timer, um, but so basically in the main chat room where Christina is now, only recruiters can be on video or really use any broadcasting media. Candidates will only have the option to chat via typing. Um, they can't be on, they can't use any broadcast function. However, I as a candidate can be on video. Um, once the employer starts a private video, it will notify me as a candidate that you're initiating a private video and then I have the option to approve or deny this request as the candidate. If I approve it, then we'll be on video chat. Um, but that's the only time I as a candidate can use a broadcasting option. Now, uh, another question is how many private chats can a representative have at one time? It, we don't limit that, the number of private chats you can have. I mean, obviously you you know, want to make it manageable, but we do not limit that. Now, in terms of video, could I have, could all eight of my reps be having video chats at the same time? In a private chat? Yes. Yes. Okay. And then in the public chat, we could have three going at the same time. That's correct. Okay. You got it. Um, can, I'm pretty sure this is answered, but can you see if a colleague has already been messaging a student? And yes. Again? Sorry. Yes, you can. So um, this little P next to my name that's circled in orange, this shows that somebody from your team is in a private chat with hope. Um, if there's a check mark circled in green this means that somebody from your team has also initiated a private chat with a candidate so this is how you can determine um, if somebody needs to talk to a candidate is there a preferred browser for for career eco yes firefox or chrome um, is what you'll need to you know to utilize to use these chat rooms um, if you're having any issues um, it's likely because you're using Safari. Um, so use Google Chrome or Firefox. If we want to have different topics during different times during the day, is there a way to indicate that or should we just put the topic breakdown and the welcome message in the chat room? Yeah, so uh, put it in the either the welcome message or um, in a message that you send out to candidates through the messaging section. There's not the option to do so um, by breaking it out in a schedule by the chat times, you, you won't be able to put specific topics. So um, just select the entirety of the time that you'd like to participate in the event. And then if you're talking about different things at different times, absolutely put them in the welcome message or again, uh, send candidates a breakdown of your schedule through the messaging section. So Emma, I have another question. Okay. So in terms of, I have maybe 15 recruiters that are gonna participate and only eight of them can be in the chat at the same time, how do I manage that? So that's just something that you'll have to decide amongst your team. So while all 15 of you will have access to all of the candidate information um, at one given time, yeah, you can only have eight recruiters in the chat room at one time. So uh, internally, you would just need to decide among your team how you'd like to break that out. How long? I'm sorry to interrupt. I wanted to 
touch upon a couple questions I'm seeing from recruiters regarding setting up on the Career Rico website. Yeah, okay. uh, we all already have access to the platform. We have sent out a few emails with the link that you need to get in to set up um, your booth and register through Career Eco. If you don't have that, um, please email me I'll, I'll, um, or Sean or Janet Votash for that information because it's imperative that you all set up your booths. Students are already in there um, and uploading their, reg their resumes so you could be searching on them and they could be searching on you. Um, the reason some people can't see it publicly is this is a private event so that only companies that are registered through Handshake and students of Carnegie Mellon can actually access it. So the only way that you can physically get to that site is through the links that we have provided to you. If you don't have those, please let us know and we will get those out to you again. It's very important that you go ahead and get started setting up your booth. I don't know if anybody else wants to add anything to that, but I thought I could answer a couple questions quickly there. If no one has anything to add, um, how long do we have access to the info that's stored in all of these sections? Sorry, in the chat room or? Um, yes, in the chat room and the notes. So the notes, you'll have access to it indefinitely. Uh, and same with the chat room transcript, because um, they can both be pulled from the reports, which you'll have access to indefinitely. Is there a way for recruiters to chat with each other on this platform, like in the back end of the system? Yes, so you can, when you're in the main chat room together, you can private chat one another, um, just like how we have with the candidates. You just initiate a private chat um, and you'd be able to do that here. So she's showing an example with a candidate, but just click on the little arrow button that would be next to your colleague's name and do initiate private chat. Or if you set up a private chat room, kind of like we showed you earlier, it will be located at the top. So let's pretend that the sample organization to the left is our main chat room and we'll pretend to the right that this is our private chat room. Once you enter in here, all of your recruiters will have the option to be in here and chat together um, so that you can talk about what's going in into in the main chat room next to you. So you have the option to toggle between both. Emma, so what happens at the end of the event? Does everything just shut down? It, so it won't shut down unless you click when, in the settings tab that we were in earlier, unless you, if you'll just uh, click that, Christina. This ends the session and closes out the room. Um, so it's not just going to shut down, but if, if you're done, you can, <laughs> you can shut it down this way. Can chatting by students be blocked in the main chat? So it can't be blocked, but if we need to um, ban somebody, um, that's, we'll have uh, staff on hand and you can click ban from chat. Um, so as a recruiter, you have the option to do that. And if you'd like to delete any messages that have come through um, from a candidate that you think needs to be banned, you'll hover over the chat text right there and hit delete message. Um, and like I said, we will have staff on hand. Um, so if you need you know, further assistance within your room, there will be people to help you. Emma, so could you real quick, we're getting a lot of questions about adding users um, yes. to, to their booth. Could you go back real quick and show them how to do that? Sure. So we would go as the admin. So um, the first person who registers for the event will have admin access. Um, and if you want to add a new user, you would first click on admin like Christina just did and then hit add new user. Here, all you need to do is input their first and last name and then their email address. They'll then receive an email asking them to complete their login information um, and then they'll have access to the event. Um, 
if for some reason you receive a, a pop-up that says um, this user is already you know added to another organization account you'll again you'll need to reach out to our events inbox team and they'll have to move them um, on the back end into your account just because right now we have it so that organization or recruiters can only be a part of one organization I um, mean Christina's put it up here and I'll go ahead and put it in the chat or email so that you guys have it Awesome. Um, Emma, can you clarify the student messaging options? So if students only review messages at 11 a.m. and then 11 p.m. when the event is over, how will recruiters communicate back with the students? Will that be through email or will recruiters need to go back into the platform after the event is over? So you can still send messages through our platform post event. If, if you'd like to send them personal emails, um, you can because you'll have access to that information. We just, we just want to notify you that you guys should make sure that you're blind copying all of these candidates because we don't want them to have access, you know, to each of their email information for security purposes. So either use the messages section just as you had been doing ahead of the event or um, you can you know download a candidate report which will give you all of the candidates emails and you could send them an email can you talk about the show as busy option do you recommend using this as a way to prevent candidates from controlling one-on-one -on -one conversations or should we use this sparingly I, I would um, try to use it sparingly, and obviously this is, you know, dependent on how many recruiters you have in your room. So if, if again, your chat room is extremely busy and has volume, then absolutely mark yourself, you know, as busy so candidates are aware that this is why you're not responding and it's not just because you're just choosing to be unresponsive. Um, but I feel that if you know, you can use it as sparingly as possible to do so. Okay, it's almost 1.15, so it's probably a good time to uh, close out, but then questions that are still in the Q&A, um, Emma, we'll send those to you and Christina to answer and then yeah. send out to everybody um, when we send out the link to the recording from today. Um, Megan, do you want to close out anything before we sign off? Or Emma and Christina, anything that you would like to add? Just thank you all for joining and taking the time to learn our platform. We're excited for uh, you all to use us. So um, thank you again. And if you have any questions, again, our events inbox is always staffed with people. So they're happy to help you. Uh, and we hope that this was helpful. Yeah, and then thank you. From the student side, we're all really excited to meet you, and we're just as anxious as you are about this new platform. So don't worry, we're all in this together, and figure out how to make this a good opportunity and experience for everyone. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. We'll be in touch with the details from today's session. Emma, Christina, thank you very much for being here. And Tanvi and Megana, thank you for your remarks and Sean for your engagement. And uh, we look forward to seeing everybody virtually um, September 14th through 16th. Thank you and have a great rest of the day. Bye everyone, thank you. Thanks, bye.